Hello there, dear people. It's Tim here at uh, Faith Lutheran Church in Warradale. I'm so pleased to greet you on this blessed Christmas morning. And I pray that this day, um, whether you're alone or with family or with friends or wherever it is that you are, that you will receive this message of grace, of love and peace. That the living word of God who was there in the beginning took on flesh and became a human being and lived among us. The Lord bless you with this message of peace, this message of hope for Jesus' sake. And we're here in his name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Christmas to you. May I bless you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm sitting here reflecting on, on Jesus ushering, being ushered into the world in a, just a, a lowly place, a humble place. The Lord of all, the Messiah, the King, the Judge Almighty, who will decide between all people of all nations, of all ages. And he came down right into the middle of life and settled among us. And so everyday people, common people, shepherd people, innkeepers, street people, could see and know this Jesus, this Messiah, this Lord of life, this one who knows them, who loves them, who forgives them, whose mercy is there for them in every circumstance of their lives. And then I thought, well, I'm about to climb up here and I'm going to stand up here elevated and speak down to you. That's kind of the geographical thing. In a perfect world... Now, in an imperfect world, it would be probably be better for me to sit down there on the ground with my knees crossed <laughs> and just talk gospel with you, talk love, talk real life, not airy-fairy, highfalutin language, just the fact that you're loved, <laughs> loved by God. And nothing can change that. He, he came not to lord it over us, but to live with us. And even better to live within us, to dwell within us through the power and the presence of his Holy Spirit. I don't know whether we in our community always get that because we always seem to be looking for the powerful, the more obvious, the more visible. And um, as if what we see on the television of powerful people, important people, actually is what gives us life and hope. And I've seen enough of it and probably so of you to know, no, it doesn't. The bottom line is, the only eternal hope we have, and it's not just an eternal esoteric kind of thing out there, but it's an eternal hope that begins in us here and now. For we are part of the kingdom of God now. You're baptised into him. You're baptised into him now and into his kingdom now. And he dwells with us now. And we don't have to um, wait on that because we're a part of the kingdom now. And that's real life. And that's being down there wherever the Lord places us. His presence, his shining light in the kingdom. You know, year after year after year after year, the Christian church has proclaimed, re proclaimed, and re re proclaimed the promises of the prophets all those centuries ago. And we heard it again spoken in the reading from Hebrews before. What does it say? Long ago, in many ways, at many times, God's prophets spoke his message to our ancestors. But now at last, says the writer to the Hebrews, now at last God has done what he promised he would do. God keeps his promises, sending a saviour to dwell among us, to take on flesh, to be what we cannot be, 
to fulfil the law like we cannot fulfil the law, to die in our place like none of us wants to die and fully pay the price for our sin, but he does it for us so that all of us who look to him, who believe, trust, put our hope in him, we don't die, we live forever. That's our hope. That's the gift of faith. That's a precious gift. As I was listening to the word being proclaimed before, I heard this. Now, what did I hear? I've just got to find that reading. Yeah, from Isaiah. This is, the prophet comes out and the prophet doesn't park himself up on a mountain. He just goes down to where the people are. And this is what he says. He says, good news, you're saved. Imagine going down to Marion, just encountering people who are looking down and out and sitting down next to him. Say, got some good news for you now. You're saved. Who, who, me? Yeah, you. Yeah, you. What do you mean, saved? Well, I can tell you more. I can tell you more. I can tell you that you're loved. I can tell you that your life matters. I can tell you that when you're feeling down and you're feeling like there's nothing much left to live for, there's still everything there and it's God's promise for you. I can tell you about Jesus. So that's what I loved, loved about this. these prophets. They just went to where the people were and they just said, good news, you're saved. And then you think about Jesus and the way he lived. And uh, no fancy clothes, no, no Pope mobile, no... <laughs> No limousine, no stallion, just a donkey arriving in a womb on a donkey, born in a common old stable down there amongst the detritus of life. And then walking the streets. And today, if you went to Jerusalem, there are some old, old ancient streets that you could probably, if you walked up and down them enough, you'd probably literally step in the steps where Jesus might have stood. You're nodding like you have. <laughs> yeah. And what a, what a tangible reminder that that's how Jesus was. He walked. He went from place to place and when he went, he went with open heart, open eyes, open ears. The good news in the flesh. Not just telling them they're saved, but saving them. Loving them, blessing them, healing them listening to them as they cried from the depths of their souls, blessing them with what they hadn't even asked for, but he knew was their internal cry. Lord, save me. Lord, have mercy. And he did, and he does. And this little babe grew up, and in a some, some ways you could say he, he ended up where he began from, I don't know whether I can say this, but yes, from, from the very human blood of childbirth to the blood of the cross. His blood poured out for us. you for me for the whole world for those neighbors who don't believe but who perhaps inside are crying out to be known and loved maybe some of your family members who say i don't need you and your old fuddy-duddy religious stuff <laughs> but somewhere deep inside them they got a yearning for something that's real something that saves It arrived, he arrived, 2,000 years ago, that first Christmas day, the word became flesh and came and lived and lives among us. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing in this, this time of worship. Uh, my prayer is that this word has blessed you, refreshed you, encouraged you in some way. That this, that this Christmas blessing that you received today through the living word become flesh and now in his spoken word 
is a word that actually refreshes and renews and revitalizes you for life every day. So now I want to send you out with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace now and always. Amen. Bye for now. Spirit be now and through.